guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon and welcome back to part two of Backpacking 101. In today's episode, we are discussing what to pack. That includes gear and food options. Now, I'm going to show you all the things that you would need on a backpacking trip, gear wise, and then we'll move on to food. I have a gear packing list linked below. So, if you want this list, if you're sure that you're gonna forget something, click below, you can download it. And let's get on with the video. Okay, so here is an overview of what I have here. We're gonna start with the big three, which is your pack, your tent, and your sleep system. So you're gonna need a backpacking backpack. This is my Osprey Aura AG65, so it's 65 liter. Um, if you're really only gonna go for like two to five days, you will not need a 65 liter backpack. You will most likely only need like a 50 to 55 liter. So um, the bigger the backpack, the more you're gonna probably cram into it. So um, stick to smaller backpacks if you are not gonna go for very long. Um, then here we have my sleeping bag. This is a REI sleeping bag. I'll link all of this below. Um, it is rated for, I think, 28 degrees, something like that. It's definitely below freezing. So um, this is nice and warm, nice and toasty. And then of course I have my big Agnes tent here. This is a great tent. It's the Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2, and it is a two-person tent, but one person comfortable. Two people kind of tight. <laughs> and then here I have my, my Thermarest Neo Air sleeping pad. So that is your big three items that you will definitely need for backpacking. A backpack, a tent, a sleeping bag, and a sleeping pad. Now, let's move on to clothing items. So my clothing items are here. Let's start with, I guess let's start with like under layers. So under garments, um, of course, socks. These are darn tough socks. They're really, really soft. I've never had blisters or anything with these. So I recommend darn tough. Um, then I have some Patagonia underwear. These are nice wicking underwear. Um, and then if you're a girl, you're gonna need a sports bra. So those are under things. And then um, I take a tank top. And then of course uh, you're gonna pack, you know, as many layers basically as you can. So I have a tank top here. I have a long sleeve thin shirt, a wicking shirt right here. It's long sleeved. And then I also have leggings, so long pants as well for colder mornings, that kind of thing. Um, I did use these a lot on the Pacific Crest Trail. And then of course, it depends on your preference. We have shorts here. These are Nike Pro shorts, or we have the Purple Rain Adventure skirt here. If you are a skirt wearer, there's your skirt. You'll probably take a skirt instead of the shorts. If you're a shorts person, you'll take the shorts instead of the skirt. Um, and then we have our outer layers. We have a puffy coat. You'll definitely need a coat for nights get cold. Um, a outer shell, so this is just a shell, waterproof um, in case of wind and rain. And then we have a hat. Uh, this is most often used for sleeping. It uh, tends to get cold or just on cold days you can wear your wool hat and then of course sun hat as well whatever kind of sun hat you prefer baseball cap or um, like a full brim sun hat type thing and then as far as sleeping clothes you'll want an extra pair of sleeping clothes um, because you'll take this stuff off and it will be sweaty and you do not want to sleep in it you'll be cold so um, I have a long sleeve REI sleeping shirt and then some long leggings are also REI sleeping leggings. 
Um, these are just your sleeping clothes. You do not want to wear these out hiking or anything like that to get them sweaty or dirty or wet. It's very nice to be able to have something dry to wear when you're sleeping. Okay, so those are clothes. Now let's in get into, I guess, shoes, since shoes are kind of with clothes. Um, so you'll have your boots, of course, and then your camp shoes. This is just an example. O obviously, Birkenstocks are really expensive, but I didn't have regular flip-flops or anything. So most people take Crocs or flip-flops or something that's super lightweight as a camp shoe. Um, and that will help your feet kind of air out and stuff after you take off your boots. It's really, really nice to have camp shoes. Now let's come over here. We have our water drinking system here. Whatever kind of filter you want. Um, I'll link the filter video right here. If you don't know what kind of filter you wanna take, it'll kinda of help you out a little bit. But I have my water bladder here, and then I have my Sawyer Mini in line with the water filter. So um, basically, you just fill this up with dirty water, and you drink through the Sawyer, and you get clean water which is great. And then we'll move over here to cook setup. Um, you'll need a pot. You'll need a fuel source because you'll most likely have a little stove. So this is a stove, fuel source, um, spoon, fork, combo. And then here I have my Sea to Summit. It's a 16 ounce cup or bowl or whatever you want to use it for. That's pretty neat. So you'll want to take a lighter to be able to light your stove, um, super important, otherwise you cannot cook your food, depending on what kind of stove you have. Some of them have an automatic light, which at that point you would not need to worry about this. But I would bring a lighter just in case, or some sort of waterproof mattress in any case, just, you know, just in case you needed to make a fire for some reason. Um, whether it be like for rescue or for if you have hypothermia or something, you need to get warm. Just having some sort of fire starting source is important regardless of whether or not you are needing it for your stove. And then we have our toiletries, which will vary from person to person. Um, you have your poop trowel. Don't worry, that's not poop on there. It's just dirt. Um, I was, in my Leave No Trace video, I was digging with this in the yard to kind of show how deep to dig and that kind of thing. So, and that's just dirt. And we have, of course, TP. Please pack it out. Um, we have a pack towel here. So this is just a little towel that dries really fast. And what's in your toiletries will vary person to person. These are just some example items I have. You won't probably need deodorant, but some people like to have it and carry it. You will stink regardless, so most people don't take deodorant, but I just have it here as an example. Some people like to take it. Uh, sunscreen is really important. You'll take bug spray probably. Bug spray is really important. And then of course a little toothpaste and a toothbrush. Now this is a huge toothbrush. It's not really gonna fit very well in like a little baggie that you might use to put all these toiletries in. Um, so what a lot of through hikers do to save weight and space is they cut their toothbrush in half. They basically cut this whole bottom half off, which with something this long I might recommend because it's kind of pointless. And then some wipes. These are nice for cleaning yourself. Yeah, especially if you don't have a water source to kind of wash yourself off in. And then up here I have my first aid kit. If you want to know what's in this first aid kit, I will link the video right here. And um, yeah, it also varies person to person, whatever you want to take in your first aid kit. But that's that. And then we have some other little items here that are pretty necessary. Uh, we have our bug net here. If you're hiking in Oregon in July and early August, you will need this. We have our little knife here. Um, this can come in handy if you need to cut, uh, you know, packaging open or cut tape or whatever, rope, 
this is really handy and then of course this is like a multi thing it has the degrees on it it is a whistle and then also a compass another thing that you need to bring is a headlamp there are multiple different options you can get one at your local outfitter there's the black diamond brand which is super popular but a little more spendy um, but they do make really lightweight headlamps which is great and then there's some like knockoff head black diamond headlamps they'd weigh a little more um, but you can get them at Costco sometimes they sell them in like a two pack for like 24 bucks so they're super cheap um, but again a little extra weight so if you're only going for a couple of days backpacking that little bit of extra weight is probably going to be fine um, so if you don't want to invest in a hundred dollar headlamp go with an option like this one from Costco and you'll be absolutely fine if you're heading out for a longer section hike um, or a, some sort of through hike you're going to want to cut weight with as many items as you can so at that point I would definitely recommend something like the Black Diamond brand and you're going to want to take some extra plastic bags depending on how long you're out uh, it'll depend on how many you want to take this is just to carry out your trash and stuff like that and then these are just stuff sacks you can get really nice lightweight ones from sea to summit a lot of brands make stuff sacks so but sea to summit makes really nice lightweight ones if you're trying to cut down on weight and stuff so stuff sacks are nice because you can keep all this organized like all your clothes would go into one stuff sack you know toiletries all your cook items and that kind of thing so you stay more organized and then here is just a backup charger, um, it's the Li Pao charger, it's not particularly lightweight, but um, that's what I have for now. And then of course, don't forget to take your map. So that is it as far as gear. So again, all of this is going to be listed below, uh, as well as the downloadable checklist. And now let's move on to food. So as far as food options go, it is all about personal preference. Some people like to eat really sweet food when they're backpacking. They want Snickers, Twix, fruit gummies, all that kind of snacky stuff. Um, some people want chips and nuts and more savory kind of things. And some people are just like, I want to be as healthy as I can. I don't want to eat a bunch of junk food. So. There's so many options out there as far as what you can take on a backpacking trip. I'm just going to show you a few options of what I think is necessary and what you shouldn't skimp on as far as food. So for breakfast, that's so personal. Some people don't like eating breakfast at all. They just want a bar to go and hit the trail. Personally, I like to eat some oatmeal in the morning and have a coffee. So I like to have a little more relaxed breakfast. The way I pack my oatmeal is I don't like the pre-packaged little packets because they're often too sweet. I'll just buy some of those quick cook oats and mix in whatever I want. So you can mix in chia seeds, those are really high in energy and protein and um, some for sweetness you could mix in some coconut flakes um, stuff like that so maybe some dried fruit maybe some dried blueberries dried bananas that kind of thing it's really delicious so that's what I like eating for breakfast when I'm backpacking I also really enjoy these Starbucks via things this one is a latte one so it already has cream it already has milk in it which is really handy then you don't have to take anything else with you you just dump this in pour hot water on it and you have your latte. If you drink black coffee, they have um, the super tiny Via ones where it's just black coffee, which is great. For backpacking snacks, jerky is always a good option. Now, Costco sells these huge jerky packs. They sell actually a two pack, so you get two of these. Um, so if you're going on a longer backpacking trip, this is a 
very good option for you as far as cost. You just buy these and then you take little Ziploc bags and put however much you think you'll need for a stretch of trail into the Ziploc bags and you're good to go. The little, the little bags of jerky are a lot more expensive. Another great thing for snacks is nuts. So I just have some almonds here. You can buy in bulk whatever nuts you want and then mix them all together and make like a trail mix. So I don't like a lot of the things that are in generic already store mixed trail mix. I don't like raisins. Um, I don't like certain nuts so a lot of that is usually in trail mix. So I like to just buy bulk and then mix my own. Um, that way I'm sure to like everything in the trail mix. I'm sure to eat it and I'm not packing unnecessary weight that then I'm not going to eat. Nuts are a great source of energy for the amount of weight that you're carrying. So when you're backpacking you want to think you want to think of it as a ounce to calorie ratio. So for example this bar is 1.8 ounces but it gives you 220 calories so that is a great ounce to calorie ratio. So here is for example a Lara bar. It's super super dense dried fruits and nuts so this is really healthy and it'll give you that boost of energy that you're looking for. Um, another great bar that I have here is the RX bar. Um, it just has these ingredients that are on the packaging nothing else and it's it's super healthy um, it even has egg whites in it, so if you're one of those people that likes breakfast on the go, this might be a great option. These are also a really good option as far as a quick boost of energy. If you don't want to be crunching on nuts, you can kind of just squeeze this in your mouth and it's, it's you know, almond butter. It's great. Um, and then another way to eat these is if you take tortillas with you obviously you're not going to take this whole thing you're going to take however many you want out put them in a little ziploc bag uh, these are heavy so think about how many you're taking and you just squeeze some of this almond butter in a tortilla and it's actually really really good and then during the day when you're backpacking you do not want to forget about electrolytes it is super 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 important when you're backpacking in the summer to replenish your electrolytes. A lot of people start feeling dizzy, lightheaded, like faint, um, lack of energy, they start getting headaches, that kind of thing because they're not replenishing their electrolytes. When you're backpacking in the summer especially you are sweating a lot so you your body is not able to replenish its electrolytes fast enough sometimes with how much you're sweating so these are a great source of electrolytes and this one is actually energy too so it has a little bit of caffeine in it as well if you're one of those people that likes a little boost of caffeine in the afternoon get the noon energy and it will um, replenish your electrolytes and it will boost your energy. And then as far as dinners go, there are so many backpacking food options out there. This is just, you know, one of the generic ones, Mountain House. This is Chili Mac with beef. These are really huge as far as packaging goes. Like, look how big this is. This is bigger than my head. Um, and it's freeze-dried uh, food, so it lasts for a long time. Like this expiration date is not till 2027. That's kind of crazy to me how long this can last. Um, so I don't really like eating this kind of packaged food. There are definitely healthier options out there. So I personally wouldn't go with Mountain House, but if you are, you know, sometimes you can find these on sale and if you're on a budget or something like that or the store has nothing else. I guess this is fine, but I don't really recommend it. What I do recommend is Outdoor Herbivore. That is one of my favorite backpacking food brands. And this, for example, is chickpea sesame penne. So, um, yeah, it's noodles. And the packaging is significantly smaller. 
and it's just the packaging of the food so it's not like like that one it was so huge and extra bulky because the packaging is designed to be used as like a you don't need a bowl basically you just pour the hot water into the packaging which I also find a little weird and kind of unsafe <laughs> um, as far as like the plastic leaking chemicals I don't know it just when plastic gets hot I find it weird um, outdoor herbivore is a great great backpacking food brand I will link my multiple outdoor herbivore review videos here um, so you can check those out this is really delicious I've had this one before they're not any heavier than the mountain house meals so and they're not freeze-dried they actually have a one-year expiration date so that is it as far as volume 2 of backpacking 101 now stay tuned for volume three we're going to talk about how to pack your backpack and tips and tricks on the trail so stay tuned and i'll see you next time